Hi, this is a short tutorial that's uh, related to the Integrative Conservation Conference um, workshop and using OpenGIS that happened uh, back in September of 2018. And um, we're going to walk through the steps that we went through in that conference session for a couple of ways of using um, GIS data within QGIS, which is one of the most popular open source GIS software programs that is out there right now. Um, if you want to download this data set to follow along, you can go to communitymappinglab.org. You see this on the top of the page. Um, ICC Open GIS Workshop, or if you go under Courses, it's one of the drop downs that you'll see available there and be able to go straight to this page. You can download a link to the, or, or connect to the um, QGIS software to download and install it. Um, you can also download the data here um, to look at it. Um, we've got it um, already downloaded. Um, let me pull it up here and show you what that looks like as we open it up. Um, there's several items in that folder. Um, so we see we've got a CSV file, which is a spreadsheet. We've got a um, style file that we're going to use with some raster data along with the raster data. And then a geo package file, which is a kind of vector um, data format, um, similar to shape files in terms of the way that they work. And so um, we're going to work with all of those here um, in this session just to walk through kind of how you get in different kinds of data within QGIS and some um, idea of how you can do some kinds of analysis with those data. So let's start off with moving these to a folder on our computer. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, go to a separate folder that I've already set up. Um, for QGIS data and move it over here, right? And I'm going to go ahead and drag these files, all of them, I'll say Control A, and move them over to this file here. And you can see you've got them all listed, so now they're on your computer. And then I'm going to shift over to QGIS. So I'm using QGIS version um, 2.0 or 3.2 um, to uh, work with these data. Um, the easiest way to add data in QGIS, um, well, there's multiple ways to do it. If you go under Layer, add layer and add vector layer. We're going to start off working with vector data. If you're not familiar with the difference between vector and raster data, one of them is points, lines, and polygons. Think about things like census data or housing data or roads, um, sampling points, these kinds of things. That's vector data. Raster data is more like a photograph. Satellite imagery would be an example, or we're going to work with some classified land use data um, where you have pixels. Um, that are regularly spaced throughout um, the data set. So we're going to add a vector layer here. We're going to add um, census tracts in the Atlanta metro area from that geo package file. So when I um, go ahead and do that, I end up with this data source manager, and you can load lots of different kinds of data sources um, within QGIS from this tool. I'm going to go ahead and search. I'm going to look in this temporary folder that I've set up here with my QGIS data, geo package and go ahead and click on Add. Geo packages can actually contain several layers. In this case, there's just one layer. Um, so I just go ahead and, and opens that. This is census tracts for the Atlanta metropolitan area. Um, you can see them on here um, in terms of how they're listed. Um, this is just tracts, right? It just shows you where the track boundaries are. The core city of Atlanta is right here in Fulton County. Um, you can see there's higher density there. The, the tracts themselves are smaller. If you want to know more about what's in this file, we can open what's called an attribute table. The attribute table has data um, about each one of these census tracts. So think of it much more like a spreadsheet. And the way you do that is if you mouse over to the layer over in the layers folder here, right click and choose open attribute table. And we'll get a um, folder that looks something like this. Now, in this case, what we have here is data that's been downloaded from the US Census on median household income. And so the variable here is just the variable um, code for median household income. You've got the estimated income and the margin of error um, for that estimate listed here. If we wanted to just visualize that estimate, right, we could do that. Um, you do that in QGIS by right clicking on the layer again and choosing properties. And that's going to open a properties window. This properties window can do lots of different stuff. Um, you can do what are called joins here. Um, you can do some more complicated um, analysis in terms of if you have data that's 3D, for instance, you can, you can have it available on here as well. So we're going to um, just do some visualization. We're going to create what's called a choropleth map, um, which just uses different colors to represent the values. 
Um, so in this drop down menu that's right here on the page, we're going to click on it and we're going to choose graduated. That's going to give us variations on the same color. If we had data that was categorical, say land use, right, uh, land use classification or zoning, we could use categorized, where you've got categories that don't progress from low to high. Um, in this case, we're going to use graduated because we do. And we're going to use the estimate variable. And uh, notice that automatically QGIS only gives you um, columns with numerical data. Um, and then let's choose a better color ramp than this basic one. Um, let's use, we'll use this one called magma. Now you see there's nothing listed here yet in terms of values. To get those, um, we're going to choose a classification scheme, natural breaks, which we don't have time to get into right now, but we'll use that. And now we've got those values listed. If we wanted to you know, make some tweaks, we could um, reclassify it again um, and do that. If you click on the histogram tab, it'll actually show you, if you click on load values, where those breaks occur in the data. So if you wanted to move one of those, say we want to put a few more households in that highest income category, you can actually click on this line and drag it a little bit to change the classification. And if we went back here, this um, already reflects that change, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Or actually, I'll click on Apply first. And you'll see there it is. That's what it looks like. Um, you're like, oh, OK, that's all right. If you wanted to. Um, you know, choose a different one. Um, you can do that. And then click on apply again. Here's um, Virtus from the MATLAB data set and what that one looks like. You can see, you know, the highest income households are found in the northern section of Atlanta, lowest com income found in Fulton County into DeKalb and Clayton Counties down here. So um, the last thing I'll point out this sometimes this is useful if you have data that's really tightly packed. Sometimes you want to get rid of the borders. If you click on change here, um, you'll get what's called the symbol selector. And if you click on simple fill, you can change the border color, which Q just calls the stroke color. Just click on this and change it to transparent. And we can make it just completely transparent. Or maybe we want it only semi-transparent, right? In that case, what we can do is um, choose this drop-down menu again, choose this. And then, actually, I believe, if I just double click on it, there we go. See where you've got opacity here. You can actually just make it like mostly transparent here. So I click OK, click OK, now click on Apply. You see those borders get a lot lighter when I do that. And it makes the values pop out a little bit more. Um, the map doesn't look quite so cluttered. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK with that. So there's our map of census tracts values that we've created. Um, let's go ahead and add some other data. We're going to add a CSV file that we've downloaded with Snap Retailers. Again, this was in the folder that, that um, you all downloaded. To add in CSV data, so this is just an Excel file. Let me show you what this looks like. If I um, click on the Snap Retailers Atlanta and move it over, this is just a regular Excel file, right? The difference is that here it's got X and Y coordinates. Um, listed inside of it. So right here you've got X and Y coordinates and we can use those. Any GIS software can use those to locate the data. So we're going to go back to uh, our data source manager, click on delimited text. The comma tells you it's good for CSV data. And CSV is a good good format for general use with point data because um, you can open it in Excel or any word processor and work from there. And then under this geometry definition um, we can actually say, hey look, we've got coordinates in our data. And QGIS will automatically detect if it says lat or long or X or Y, it will automatically find those columns. We define our projection, and we're fine with WGS84 um, for now, the default here. And then click on Add, and there's our points. So now we've added our points to the lab. This is a list of all SNAP retailers in Atlanta. You can do the same thing here and look at the attribute table. and see what that looks like. So this is the same as our CSV spreadsheet. You can see there's some values here um, for what years those stores were present. Um, this is from an ongoing research project that I've got going on. And then I've also added a, a column here for chains to be able to detect chains. So what if we want to see just where the Walmarts are? We've got Walmart as a variable here. We can filter the data in place. So let's just look where the, the Walmarts are. If I right click on that layer and choose filter, this is very similar to an ArcGIS, um, any kind of search by attributes button it uses a SQL query box here. So um, we'll click on chain equals. And if I click all, 
you'll say, here's the here's your options. Let's say the chain equals Walmart. And you click, I can actually click on test. It says there's 63 examples. There they are. All right. And then click OK. So now we've got a list of where all the Walmarts are in the Atlanta metro area. Um, if we wanted to, we could go through and do a print layout and create these maps. So you do new print layout here and work with that. Um, I'm not going to go through that in this lesson, but there's examples online of how that works. Um, if I wanted to do Kroger's, I could do something similar here. If I duplicate the layer, right, I just change the filter to clear this. And I could change the um, filter to chain equals Kroger. Click OK. And then we'll turn that layer on. And then you can see where those um, Kroger's are. We'll make those a different color. So same thing, you can go under Symbology, and here I'm just going to change the fill color to, um, we'll call those red. And click OK. You can see where the Kroger's are and where the Walmarts are, and perhaps you could do some kind of analysis of those locations um, together. So that's how you work with um, vector data in QGIS. Let's walk through um, a little more briefly about working with um, raster data. So we're going to go ahead and discard um, this data file here. Um, there's also all sorts of tools. I'll just note here that you can use um, in this processing toolbox. If we wanted to say buffer those points, I could search for the buffer tool here and buffer those store points. And we're not going to go through that in this introductory video, but it gives you some sense of how that works. Let's just look at some raster data in QGIS real quick. So um, to get raster data, you just click on raster, and we've got data from the national land cover data set. So let's go ahead and pull that in, and um, it's this TIFF file right here. So it's a GeoTIFF is the format that's listed here. Again, this is just for the Atlanta metro area. Let's go ahead and click on add. And this is data um, from the National Land Cover Database. You can Google that if you'd like more information on it. It uses um, Landsat data, I believe, to classify um, different land type usage uh, across the United States. So if we pull that data in here, it right now it looks kind of ugly, right, because it just has these values. Um, I'll just pull up real quick just so you can see what this looks like. Um, legend. These values correspond with different types of land uses. So while it's a numeric value, and right now QGIS is treating it like it's a numeric value, it's a number, it actually corresponds with um, a particular type of land use. So what we're going to do is use this style file um, that's already got a classification scheme for um, NLCD data to classify it. So if I click on Symbology and then go into the Style dropdown right here, we're going to load a style. And we're going to use this NLCD style that was in that same folder, actually. NLCD style that was in that same folder. And you'll see it automatically now classifies these different land types with a color scheme that's actually very similar to the color scheme that you saw um, in that uh, page I just had up. In this page right there. It's the same color scheme as it's present on this page. So if we click on that and click OK, there we go. And now you can see really clearly where the most developed areas are, the developed areas in red, where the green space is. You can go through and do a little more analysis with that. Um, QGIS has tools where you can do what are called zonal statistics. So if you wanted to take that tract or county data and analyze what percentage of all land within a particular area is classified in a certain way, we can do that. Um, but you get some sense of what this looks like. Now with um, these data, you don't have an attribute table. If I right click here, I get a different menu but you can say query a particular point. So I could zoom in here and say, oh, what's this yellow area right here? What's the, the number that that's classified as? I can click on this identify tool up here and see over here that it's band 81. I can go back to um, my legend and it's pasture and hay, right? So that's um, pasture land according to this particular data set. So that gives you just a brief overview of working, at least loading, and doing some basic description of both raster and vector data sets in QGIS. Hopefully this is useful for you.